hello lovely family welcome back to another video of mine my name is mercy my channel is dedicated to helping you move from your country to the uk to work as a health professional so just yesterday somebody posted in my telegram page that the ministry of health in ghana has currently suspended the selling of clearance forms to nurses and if you know the uk process very well you know that diploma nurses have to clear themselves from the ministry of health first before nmc ghana so this means that anyone who hasn't got into that particular stage would encounter a problem or a delay in their process so if you are someone who is yet to make up their mind about whether or not they still want to move to the uk i'll suggest that you make up the decision now and you start the process as soon as possible not only is there pressure in ghana but over here as well a lot of pressure is now on employers who are still recruiting from red list countries such as ghana and nigeria they believe that these countries are also suffering from shortage of healthcare workers and yet uk is going to employ from those countries even further making the situation worse for these countries so if you are yet to start the process i'll suggest that you do so asap also if you're not part of my telegram page i'll urge you to join as soon as possible because i don't always get the time to make videos however if you're on my telegram page you can get to interact you can ask me questions and we kind of get interactive on there as well so consider joining the telegram page as well so in today's video i'll be talking about a skilled worker visa i plan to make this a series where i talk about all the various visas and so that we get options not only with the skilled worker visa so that you know the other options that are available to you because i personally believe in the next coming year this particular skilled workers visa is going to be difficult for people in ghana or nurses or doctors in ghana moving to the uk so if there are other options for you at least you have an idea of other routes to take so stay tuned to the video i'll be right back a disclaimer i'm not a visa specialist i don't work at home office i'm not a uk government official so this information that i'm going to give you today is something that is available to the public and you can find that on the uk government website however i have gone to do my research and I've gone to understand it and I'm here to explain it to you. So the visa I'm going to be talking about today is the skilled worker visa. And do not confuse this with the tier 2 general visa. They are not the same. The skilled worker visa came to replace the tier 2 general visa. And there are lots of differences. However, I'm just going to be mentioning two of those differences. So with the tier 2 general visa, you need to have been earning at least 35000 uh, pounds a year do not quote me on that figure though thirty five thousand pounds a year to be able to get that particular visa however they've brought that threshold down so now if you have a job that is going to be paying twenty five thousand pounds a year thereabout you can get skilled worker visa also when it was time for you to apply for indefinite leave to remain the amount of money you need to have in your account is higher for tier 2 visa however with a skilled worker visa too they brought that amount down okay so these are the only two differences that i'm going to be touching on so now let's look at the eligibility criteria what will make you eligible for this particular visa first of all your employer must be um, approved by the home office and if you don't know who the home office is Home Office is responsible for immigration, security and law and other issues in the UK. So your employer must be approved. Secondly, they should give you a certificate of sponsorship. So you need a certificate of sponsorship. Thirdly, you have to be able to speak English, read English and write English. And that is the reason why we write IELTS, okay? Because this is to prove that you can do all of those things. Eligibility number four is to at least be given the minimum salary for that particular job you can't come for you can't be employed for a particular job and your salary should be below the minimum you know salary for that particular job so at least you should be able to be earning the minimum 
salary for that particular job so the third option is to have a job that is on the eligibility list like i mentioned earlier there's a list of jobs that are eligible to have this visa so your job that you're coming to do in the uk should be on that particular list so these are the five main eligibility criteria that you need to be able to get this visa so with this particular visa you can stay in the uk for up to five years okay after that you can apply for indefinite leave to remain or what we call ILR and if they find that you are eligible and all your documents check out then you can be given the ILR to stay in the UK for as long as you want when you are applying for this visa in total it takes like three months to be ready however if you are applying from outside the UK you can get a decision within three weeks and if you are inside the UK it takes about eight weeks to get a decision but all in all it takes about um, three months to be ready so now let's look at what you can do and not do on this particular visa so with this visa you can study with this visa you can work any of the eligible jobs on that list that i'm talking about you can travel outside the uk and return to the uk you can apply to live permanently in the uk after five years then you can bring your partner and children as dependents to the uk with you also on this visa you can volunteer that is do voluntary work uh, that will be jobs where you will not get paid there are two important things that you cannot do on this visa and number one of those things is public funds you are not eligible to access public funds if you're on the skilled worker visa and if you don't know and you go and access a public fund it would affect you when you are applying for your indefinite leave to remain so if you're in the uk and you're unsure about which public fund you are not eligible to you can email home office you can call home office and ask them if you are eligible for this public fund or not because it would affect you when it comes to applying for a leave to remain another thing you cannot do on this visa is you cannot change employers or jobs without applying to update your visa when you enter into the uk with an employer and with a, this particular visa if you want to change your employer or change the job that you do you need to uh, um, apply to update it okay because it's a whole new employer and a whole probably a whole new job okay so these are the things that you cannot do on this particular visa so somebody may be wondering what these public funds are so these public funds are benefits or um support that they give to people on low income in the uk so if you're on this visa you are not eligible to access any of these public funds i remember having almost a heart attack when i found out that you couldn't access public funds on this visa but i had already applied for council tax discounts and luckily council tax discount is not part of the public funds there is council tax reduction but that is not the same as council tax discounts so if you're on a skilled worker visa you can still have council tax discounts and these are like the store occupancy discounts if you are living alone in your apartment you don't need to be paying extra money you can apply for them to reduce their council tax for you all right so another thing about this particular visa is you cannot work more than 20 hours extra a week on this particular visa i'll explain if you were contracted or in your contract you are for full time which is 37.5 hours a week the only extra shifts you can do on top of that 37.5 hours a week is just 20 hours you cannot do above that 20 hours during covid this was scrapped because a lot of people were, were falling ill and there was a lot of shortage of staff but now that covid is uh, going away this has been brought back in full force and we are to pay mind to it make sure that you don't work more than 20 hours extra if not it will affect you when you are applying for ilr and also the job that you should do should be in the same should be the same job you can't be a nurse your employer employed you to be a nurse and then you go and do something else at somewhere for your extra 20 hours the job must be in the eligibility list or be the same job okay so you can be a nurse you can work for your trust and possibly go and do a shift somewhere in another hospital okay you are still a nurse 
and you are still going to work as a nurse in that hospital so that should be okay so there's a limit to which you can even do extra shifts at this particular time so sometimes when people are home and they're asking you for money and you say you don't have they think you are lazy you don't want to work extra hard but even with the kind of visa you have you are not allowed to overwork yourself if not some of us would have worked extra 24 hours i remember i said that if you come to the uk with a particular visa which is this visa you cannot go and look for another job and be employed to another employer with that same visa that you came into the country with you have to let your new employer issue you a new visa and a new certificate of sponsorship and a new contract okay so it doesn't mean that you cannot change employers when you come into the country you can change employers but a new employer will have to give you a whole new visa and a whole new certificate of sponsorship another advantage of being on this skilled worker visa is you're allowed to travel outside uk and return to the uk also you can bring your partner and children as dependents if they meet the eligibility criteria also you can study on this visa you can still go to school and further your education you can have extra job okay as long as they are in the eligibility criteria and you can work up to 20 hours extra on top of your normal um, contracted hours and also you can apply to settle in the uk after working here for five years or after living here for five years so those are the advantages of being on this skilled worker visa i started with this visa because it's the most common one and it's the one all of us know especially thank you very much for watching my videos and like i said i'm going to make this into a series so that was just the skilled worker visa i will go into details on the other types of visas that we have so that you know which ones you are eligible to apart from this skilled worker visa and mind you the skilled worker visa is not for only nurses or doctors there is a whole eligibility list of jobs that you can have that can give you this particular visa so subscribe below and don't forget to ring the bell so that if i upload new videos you will be alerted and like i said don't forget to join my telegram group where we get very interactive and you can easily get to me and ask your questions all important links are going to be linked in the description box or in the comment section so that you can go and have a read for yourself thank you very much for watching and i hope to see you in my next video Take it back your heart I'll still spin inside your orbit